Before you rent a, an apartment, nearness to public transport, fighting bed bugs, and it was a no for me. An open kitchen concept. I mean, everybody staying in the five bedroom have to share that one washroom. Hello and welcome to another exciting vlog. In today's vlog, I'm going to be talking about certain things to consider before you rent a, an apartment in Canada. I'm going to be listing out nine things you should consider. I think these are very important things to ask and also find out about where you're about to rent an apartment from. And yeah, just everything you need to consider. This list is not exhaustive. So if you think of any other thing, or there's something you consider more important that I haven't listed out today, please list, that, list them out in the comment section. It's going to help someone out there, um, particularly those who are new to Canada and don't really know where to start. Renting an apartment here can be really difficult, so I can imagine how stressful it may be when you're thinking about the things to consider before you pay for that apartment. So we're just gonna dive in immediately. Number one I'm going to talk about here is for you to consider if you're going to be renting an apartment from a landlord like a private owner of an apartment or a house or you're going to be dealing with a property management company each one of these options has its pros and cons um there i have had friends tell me about very good instances they've had where they rented apartments from private owners landlords landladies and they had a very good relationship with these landladies and landlords they were able to form a good connection and these people were even able to help them with settling in canada for the first few weeks of which they landed here in the same vein there are also sad tales about renting with private owners each way has its own pros and cons it's just for you to make sure that you do the your due diligence to find out which of them you'd like to go for, weigh the advantages against the disadvantages before you decide. When I came to Canada the first time, I had to rent with a private landlord. And I have a video about that experience down on my vlog. I'm going to, down on my channel, I'm going to link that. I had a very horrible experience renting from a private owner. Um, if you want to watch that vlog, it's going to be detailed at the end of this um uh, vlog you're going to see it there i talked about my experience it's also a good learning point for you um that experience is not something that is um what's obtainable here people have had really good experiences i was just unfortunate to have a very sad experience with mine now on the other hand if you choose to deal with property management you would be dealing directly with say a more organized structure where there's a property manager to attend to your need there's an official email there's a phone number to call you can always escalate your concerns if you have any as opposed to when you have to deal directly with the landlord who may not be readily available whenever you need them but for the property uh, management companies i think most often than not there's always a property manager always on ground to attend to your needs when and should you have any of such so the first thing here is to consider what option do you want to go for do you want to go for a private um rental property where you're dealing with the landlord or landlady or do you want to deal with property managers um, that work with property management organizations that are in charge of apartment buildings as well as even townhouses and whatever option you have chosen to go for the next thing i'm going to talk about is the responsiveness of whatever option you chose from the first one i just talked about how fast are they to respond to whatever thing um whatever situation you're facing per time i'm going to explain so when you're living in a house you could have a clogged sink or you could have um a plumbing issue clock sink is still under the same category how fast are they how responsive are they to solving your needs i know you may be wondering how how am i supposed to determine that i'm just new i don't know anything about um um, any of these rental properties but it's pretty easy when you're trying to negotiate um, the rental property before you pay um, one thing you should find out is when I send messages how fast are they to respond how prompt is the response 
um when i call to find out a detail are they able to give me this detail in time do they respond two days later or a day after or do they act like they didn't even see my message or send or the email i sent so these are things you should look out for another way you can find out is just pick up your phone and make a call on a random day just to find out something it should be within their working hours though make a phone call and find out how responsive they are this is particularly important because when you're living in a house issues are bound to happen something may happen in the house and you need the urgent intervention of either the property manager or the landlord or something so you want to make sure that the house you are renting has a responsive situation in place so that you're not stranded at any point in time the next point i'm going to be moving on to is nearness to public transport the bus the streetcars the trains the trams the subway wherever you are you want to make sure that the apartment you're getting is close to public transportation and it is particularly important in the winter season where the temperature can go as high as minus 40. you don't want to have a situation where you rented an apartment in a place where your house is like a 10 minutes walk to the bus station it's going to be brutal it gets really cold you don't really want to be in that kind of situation where you're walking in that cold to the bus station you also want to find out the schedule of these buses how often do they come to your location how often do the trains pass by your location this is particularly important so that you'll be able to plan your schedule and um, when you land in canada the first time you may have plans to get a car but almost not immediately you land or if you're able to get it immediately of course this factor does not really impact on how you rent a house but i'm talking about those who don't plan to buy a car or who don't have a car immediately they land um, and they have to rely on the public transport so it's very important to find out most times when they list out properties for rent one of the catchphrase is always five minutes away from the bus stop three minutes away from the bus stop you know they would always specify if you don't see such a catch make sure to ask make sure to inquire to know is it the train station that is closest to me or is it the bus station is it the street cars or what mode of transportation is the closest one to me you need to know because that's going to determine to a great deal how you're going to go about your business in the new city you find yourself also you don't want to be waiting outside in the cold like i said earlier you may be thinking oh i could just uber it anytime the cost of uber here is very expensive by the time you do the maths on how much you spend on uber every time you're averaging like a hundred bucks you know 80 bucks there about just a short distance can um, take up a lot of money if you're going to be relying on uber so it's very important to check nearness of public transportation to where you want to rent your apartment moving on i'm going to be talking about nearness of grocery stores to your location we all eat we all buy stuff house supplies um, toiletries and whatnot that you need on a weekly or monthly basis as often as you need them you want to make sure that where you're renting an apartment is not so far away from the grocery store such that you're always stranded when you need to buy stuff even though you do bulk buying there are times where you're going to be needing fresh vegetables or say fruits you can't keep those for so long as they don't have a very long shelf life so you would have to visit the grocery store as often as possible and this requires nearness to that grocery store how easy is it for me to jump on the bus or the train and just get to the grocery store or even take an uber to the grocery store or walk it's preferable if you're able to just walk there and just grab what you want nearness to the grocery store is one of the perks that is always listed when you see a rental advertisement it's something that is quite a flex for property management and landlords they tell you this house is close to the transport is close to transportation to the bus to a bus service or is close to a grocery store, Walmart, Superstore, or whatever store you find um, around the neighborhood that um, you're trying to look for the house in. Now, on to the next point. I'm going to be talking about pest infestation. It's something you need to check when you're renting an apartment here. And the best way to find this out is to read reviews about the apartment you're about to rent out. 
so if you go online to the rental company's website most of them leave an opportunity for people to give reviews about their experience in these properties and from there you'd be able to know what kind of property you're about to rent is there always a pest or insect infestation you don't want to be moving into a house and you're fighting bed bugs you're fighting roaches you're fighting rodents you don't want any of that so it's very important to find out what is obtainable in this apartment i'm about to rent from or this house and what is the typical complaint of those who've lived here before or even the tenants who have lived who live there currently if you land in canada and you have a place to stay for the first few weeks or first few months it's also good you pay a visit to these apartments you can also get um, word from the tenants firsthand to know what's obtainable in these spaces before you rent them trust me you don't want to have an infestation of any of these pests it can get really nasty zero to hundred real quick so that is something you should consider before you pay any money or sign any lease to rent any property moving on to the next point i'm going to be talking about the heating in the building as well as air circulation two different points but i'm just going to try to merge them in one now for heating you need that very very much in the winter season how good is the heating system do i have a thermostat in the house that i get to control it myself um do you have a flat fee for the heating bill is it inclusive in my rent or am i supposed to pay that differently does the amount vary does it fluctuate depending on my usage per month some apartments put a flat fee of for example fifty dollars for whatever amount of heating or electricity you consume some other apartments make it a, a pay as you go option so that the bill varies according to how you use it per month so you need to find out all of this also you need to know how are the vents um are they good are they are they torn and broken um most times when you go to some apartments when i was house hunting there were some apartments i went into and it was a no for me the moment i stepped in because when i saw how the heating um vent situation looked like i didn't really like it even though they said it worked i wasn't really comfortable with the arrangement i saw now the only way to find this out is to go for a physical inspection and find out does this really work you can take your hand really close to the vent and you feel the heating coming out this is for when you're checking out houses in say the winter season sometime in fall and the early parts of spring because when once is spring is about to ease into summer most of the apartments turn off the heating system so you may not be able to find out you can also find out through word of mouth as well as the reviews i talked about so it's very important to check all of this how is the heating system does it heat up in winter because you really don't want to freeze out in winter in a house where the heating system does not work now moving on to the air circulation situation this is it's very important to consider things like vents is there a vent in the bathroom is there a vent in the kitchen to take out all of the fumes when you're doing your business if there's no proper air circulation you find yourself almost fainting because it's stuffy and you really cannot get all of the bad air out some apartments come with vents in the bathroom in the kitchen just to take out all of the bad odor or say the stale air in the apartment it's very important to check do these vents work you have to turn them on if they if they work if you turn them on you hear that fan sound you know if it actually works um also vents in the kitchen is very important particularly when you cook um most of these apartments and houses have an open kitchen concept one where there's no demarcation between the kitchen and the living room so whatever you cook extends straight directly into the living room and you don't want a situation where um you're choking because you're cooking or you have a guest and then you really cannot air the place because there are no vents also you need to know how many windows how many doors how which window which of the windows can i open because sometimes you could get a window and you can't open it and it may be according to code um codes here here in canada so you need to know how is the air circulation here how does it affect my breathing am i able to air this place yeah that and the heating situation I just talked about earlier. 
now moving on the next point i'm going to touch on has to do with your personal preference and i'm going to talk about the neighborhood what are the things you consider when you want to rent a space do you want somewhere with a park do you want somewhere that is near the woods do you want somewhere that is near a water body so that you could go chill there every evening do you want somewhere with a bicycle trail these are things you you need to consider um, when you're renting a, an apartment and this has to do with personal preference you also don't want to rent a house in a place where the neighborhood is not safe um, it's pretty easy to spot all of these neighborhoods that are not safe because it is the most talked about thing particularly when you're looking for a house you find people telling you things like hey don't rent a house in that area it gets really violent there or don't rent a house in that area it's not safe make sure you pay attention to things like that people say because reviews like that come in really handy so you don't find yourself in a neighborhood that is not safe you want to stay where you're able to sleep well at night without worrying if someone is coming to break your head so it's very important to be conscious of the neighborhood you want to rent also you can use a map to view whatever um, location the rental property you're looking at is to find out if there's a park or if there's a stream or if there's um, a water body a river or something just anything you prefer a park um, a basketball court nearness to a sports center to the gym if your apartment is not going to come with that so these are personal preference things that you should factor in when you're looking for a, a house to rent um, it comes in handy because it can get really really boring if you're spending all of your days indoors and you would want to go outside to just free your mind every once in a while particularly in the summer there's a whole lot of activities that go on in the summer and you don't just want to be stuck inside because you're in a neighborhood that you don't have any of these options now the next point i'm going to talk about is also a personal preference point and in this point i'm going to be talking about a cocktail of different things that you should check out number one is how big is this apartment are you one that is looking for a one bed a two bed a studio and a den a three bed how many washrooms are inside i for one i'm very particular about washrooms because i would never understand how they will say it's a five bedroom apartment with one washroom i mean everybody staying in the five bedroom have to share that one washroom or at the most two washrooms it doesn't make sense to me at all i am one who is very particular about washrooms i want to have my washroom to myself um just because i'm very particular about hygiene and just taking care of my own things and stuff like that but then these are things personal preferences that you should consider except you don't have any problem with sharing with a lot of people then that's not a big deal but if you are very particular about say the washroom most often than not if you're going to be sharing the property with a lot of other people you need to find out it could be a four bedroom with one washroom it could be a five bedroom with just two washrooms you don't want to be pressed and then you have to wait in queue for a lot of people to finish up before you go do your business how about the kitchen how big is it am i able to share this with a lot of people how do i schedule my cooking these are very important things to check out also does the the plumbing work well am i going to have issues all of this will be you have to check this out when you go to view the properties don't just be blindsided by the fact that oh it's a beautiful property and that's about it you need to do your homework and make sure that you're renting something really really good for you and you're not complaining as soon as you get the property the next thing you're going to check is parking availability if you plan to buy a car does this rental property i'm about to get have parking options for me is this street parking do they have underground parking is it heated because you really need the heated parking in the winter season you find that cars freeze when it's really cold and then one morning you want to go to the office because you parked outside you really cannot turn on the ignition of your car because the car is frozen so you really want to find out all of these options is there heating available in the parking how much is it how much is it going to add to my overall overhead cost um, you want to also find out um, how easy it is to get a parking spot particularly if you don't have a car in the interim and you plan to buy one in future so these are considerations you need to have in mind 
moving on you want to also find out about the laundry situation do i have an ensuite laundry that is a situation where the washer and dryer is inside the apartment or is it a general laundry situation where i have to go um, to a certain floor to wash in the general space that has been provided that is not a bad option as well but then what you want to find out again is how many laundry um wash how many washers and dryers are available to service like say a 20-story apartment or a 15-story apartment you don't want to go to the laundry room and they are just like what three washers and three dryers there's gonna be a long queue and you'd have to wait your time to wash so you want to make sure that there are a lot of washing and drying options particularly if it's a general laundry situation and you can also find this out when you do the inspection for the house so make sure you check all of these things they are very important if i'm going to have the laundry in my apartment how is the um cost of, how is it going to affect my whole total cost in the long run these are very important factors to check in addition to this point another thing i'm going to talk about is things like balcony do you want a balcony in your apartment some of the buildings don't come with balconies so you don't get a balcony um, if you're particular about sitting outside when it's warm to maybe read a book or maybe to pack your bike or maybe to just take a cup of tea and just relax for the evening if you're apartment doesn't have a balcony or the house you want to rent doesn't have that you'll be pretty frustrated so these are things you should consider this list is not exhaustive if you think there's something i'm missing or there are many other important things that i have not added to this please drop it in the comment section it will be helping someone it will go a long way to help people who are new here and they are wondering what kind of things should i consider before i rent an apartment if you found this video useful or you're stumbling on this channel for the first time and you haven't subscribed please do so if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for watching today's vlog please give this video a thumbs up um, drop a comment share this video to whoever you think will find it very useful and i hope you find it informative until i come again with another informative content or the next vlog watch out for it next weekend thank you so much and make sure to subscribe Bye.